I'm gonna get straight to the point. Never, ever play this game. Why? Alright, if you really want to know, fine. Let me start from scratch. I decided to do a random game that I've never played before, so I went through my list of games, and this one caught my eye for no particular reason. Shrugging, I loaded it up, and my god, what a mistake that was. Right from the opening screen and the music, I knew this was going to be a very, very bad idea. First off, the game was combined effort of Data East and Electronic Arts. What? EA back in 1990? Yeah, it's true. They've been around for a while. I remember having an old Tandy computer with a racing game made by them. In any case, it's probably not one of EA's better products. Also, although the game was made in 1990, it sure as hell doesn't look like it. The graphics are crude and badly drawn, with a primitive look to them. I get it. The game is supposed to be about Cavemen Olympics, and are drawn in a primitive look. But Joe and Mac was a caveman game, and that managed to create a crude atmosphere with much, much better graphics. Sure, Joe and Mac was made a year later, but by the same company, and one year shouldn't make that much of a difference. Before I get ahead of myself, here's the game's premise. You have a bunch of cavemen, and one cavewoman, that decide to take the basics of survival and make them into a contest to see who can win. As I said earlier, it's basically Caveman Olympics, back before the original Athens games. It could be a good idea, but it's horribly executed. There's six events to choose from, and you can either do them individually or in a practice run, or do them all in a single run gauntlet. However, unless you have a few friends willing to play this piece of shit with you, don't bother. You may be asking why. Well, each event will give you a score based on your performance, and then after that event, you'll see the scoreboard. But there's no opposition. If you're playing by yourself, you'll see the character you chose to play as, and that's it. And when you've completed all six events, you'll see the scoreboard one final time, and then it'll cut to the menu. No trophy presentation, no nothing. The first time I played the game, I had no idea what the controls were. Basically, each event has its own controls. Some are easy to figure out, others, not so much. I failed so much on the first attempts that I had to look up the instruction manual. Thankfully, it sorts things out by each event. Unfortunately, each event has an overly complex and different controls. For the most part though, it's all hopeless button mashing. Let me break out each event in detail. First off, you can choose from six people. Now, normally this wouldn't be big a deal, but each one supposedly has different strengths and weaknesses. One of them is good in all events though, and one of them fails at every event. I only used the one that was good in every event. I'm sure it probably doesn't make a hell of a difference though. The first event is a saber race. You basically smash the A button constantly to try to get ahead of the tiger following you. If you make contact with your opponent, you're supposed to press any direction to get them away from you. B jumps over obstacles, but it's not really useful because the controls are so stiff that you need to be absolutely flawless with the timing. I was never able to finish this, or really even get far, so I'm not sure how long it lasts. If the tiger catches up to you, you're eat it and move on to the next event. Yep. If you die, you just get regurgitated and come back to life again. Next up is the mate toss, which is probably the most functional game out of all of them. You just aim to throw your partner as far as possible, similar to the discus throw. First, you rotate the control pad counterclockwise, starting out slowly then increasing your speed as the meter grows. When you get to the maximum speed, hold down A to choose your angle. If you hold it too long though, it will reset to the lowest angle. Maximum angle is about 45 degrees, which is what you're aiming at. When you release A, the partner is thrown. If you don't throw her far, she'll be confused. If you do throw her, she's gonna cheer and be happy? What the hell? Why is she happy that you throw her 900 foot? How does she get up without breaking any bones? How does she not break her ass? Is she that happy that she got that far away from her partner? I just don't get it. And what the fuck is with the gravity? Didn't gravity exist back in 1 trillion B fucking C? Or does this chick have serious issues unless she weighs like 2 ounces? Is she a balloon? Are they throwing primitive blow up dolls? The third event is clubbing. Think of the jousting event in American Gladiators, and you pretty much got the gist of this. You're on a cliff with another battler, and you need to first intimidate the other guy by mashing any direction. This supposedly forces your character to get closer to the other guy, pushing him back, but I found it to be useless. The second part is the actual bashing, or lack thereof. Much like several other failed fighting games, the hit detection is just fucking awful, and the enemy AI is just SUCKS! As in, it will constantly hit you, not giving you a chance to get any power attacks. I found the best way is just to get up to him quickly and start swiping at his legs. 
Do it enough, and then move backwards. Keep repeating this until the enemy gets forced off of the cliff. I must admit they attempt to give props to Wily e. Coyote and the whole wave to the screen and fall. It's just enough for a chuckle, but then you remember you're playing this really shitty game. Repeat this a few times for this event and you'll win. Congrats. Firestart is the fourth event, and it's probably the most frantic. It's literally a race to start a fire. Woohoo. Once the original humor wears off on what exactly you're doing, it's just like every other event. Boring and not fun. Smash A about a million times to rub the sticks together until your meter is in the red. Then, start pressing down a few times to blow on the sparks. Once the kingling starts smoking, press up to inhale and down to exhale, lighting the fire. Do it too quickly and you'll hyperventilate though, or so the manual states. You can also press B to smack the other player over the head with one of the sticks, which is pretty advantageous early on. The dino race comes after that, and it's literally just racing a dino over obstacles. The controls are similar to the saber race, Except if, if you press right, you'll smack your dino over the head. This can have one of two outcomes. Either it'll race forward quickly, automatically jumping over the obstacles, or it'll get a concussion and move backwards. That's it for that one. Dino Vault comes last, and you'll be thankful it's the last event. First off, you get to choose what height you want to go to. This occurs by having the guy on the dinosaur feeding meat to the dino, making its neck grow bigger? The fuck? You then get to pull vault over it by running at it, by... What else? A. Start mashing. Once you get near the cliff, you press and hold B to vault, and then roulette East B to let go of the pole. Undershoot and you fall off the cliff. Hit the dino when you're eaten. Again. You do this three rounds, and the best score counts. That's all of the events. If you play them all, they can be done in about ten minutes. That's an awful waste of ten fucking minutes. If you followed all of the controls, good for you. They're friggin' bad. I don't understand why they just could have been simplified a bit. Is mashing A that much really necessary? Why can't you just press a direction to move and A to jump like every normal game? Or if they insist on using A for everything, why can't I hold the damn button down? And if you don't have the manual, fuck playing the game. The controls aren't obvious enough. In the first attempt at Dino Race, I had no idea how to move. You can move the dino back by holding left, so why wouldn't right be the logical choice for moving forward? I finally figured out I had to mash A to move. Same thing with the fire starting event. The controls just aren't obvious. Finally, the graphics. I already touched on the basics, but even the animations are sloppy. They're choppy, they're not enticing to look at. This game is just plain dull. Everything about this game is bad. Just stay away from it. If you play it and you spontaneously combust because your brain can't take the shittiness, don't have your family come crying to me because I warned you. Play something better than this. Hell, go play Home Alone over this one. Final score? 0 out of 10. You know, I was asked if I was ever going to give a game a 0. I said probably not. Well, I guess I was wrong. This game doesn't even deserve a 1. This game deserves to be pitched into the depths of hell, never to return again. <sighs> Thank God that review's over. Just don't play this game. Once again, this is Reaper. Happy fragging.